welcome to the channel. This week we're walking around Stafford Castle. I will be going through the history of the place and we'll be going to the top, having a look at the surrounding area and you'll see the remains of the trenches that were dug around the castle as well. So, come with me, hope you enjoy. There is no entrance fee to the grounds of Stafford Castle. However, there is a visitor centre and a car park. The car park has two disabled spaces and all parking is free. There is also no entrance fee to the visitor centre, which is funded by donations from the public. So Stafford Castle is a Grade 2 listed ancient building and site, and it's situated about two miles west of Stafford Town itself. There is evidence from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle that an earlier castle was built at Stafford, made largely of timber, around about the year 910, but the exact site of this is unknown. After the Norman invasion of 1066, it's believed that William the Conqueror, the first Norman king, ordered fortresses of defences to be built to guard against the hostile natives. The first castle was made of timber built on a massive mound of earth. The castle was built by the Norman magnate Robert de Stafford. Nothing now remains of the original timber castle. In the year 1347, a stone castle was built on the mound. These days there are lots of trees surrounding the castle, however there were no trees surrounding the castle in its heyday to provide clear line of sight to see any advancing attack on the castle. Around about the year of 1444, the castle had reached its heyday. This was when Humphrey Stafford, the first Duke of Buckingham, had control. The Staffords were a very wealthy family and also owned other castles in the country too. Edward Stafford, the third Duke of Buckingham, had royal blood. King Henry VIII saw this as a threat and so had him executed in 1571 and all the land and the castle then went to the crown.
Over the following years, the castle fell into disrepair. By the 1790s, only a small wall was visible above ground, and some workmen were employed to repair this wall, and in doing so, foundations and basements were found. It was then ordered that all the undergrowth be cleared, and the mound tidied up. The castle was partly rebuilt in a Gothic style in 1813. The castle at this stage was now lived in and given over to caretakers. After the Second World War, lots of trees were felled around the area, leaving the castle exposed to high winds, and this caused some of the structure to drop. The site was then vacated and became a target for vandals. The castle has recently been restored and lots of archaeological work has been done to investigate the site. This has resulted in the installation of information panels around the site and a very good informative visitor centre. The visitor centre is full of artefacts from the period, if you would like to try on and wear one of these helmets you can. There is lots of information around the visitor centre with regards to the history of the castle and the surrounding area and also the various occupants of the castle and owners of the grounds over the centuries.
Only one area of the castle grounds has been found to have the remains of a garden and in 1991 this medieval herb garden was built on that site. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the little bell to be notified of when I next upload a video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.